Welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Today we're working on Module 3, Lesson 7, and today we'll be using place value disks to represent two digit by one digit multiplication. So we've done multiplication using an array model, we've done it with the standard algorithm a little bit, and today we're going to be using place value disks. So I'm going to ask you to apologize, I'm going to apologize to you in advance for the way my stylus will work <laughs> on these very small diagrams. Uh, my legibility will be not so great. So I ask you to stick with me and we'll get through these problems. In each case, I'm going to do two problems today. In each case, I've chosen the most difficult of the couple of problems. So for number one, I'm choosing C. So let's look at the directions for number one that are visible right here. Represent the following expression with disks, regrouping as necessary, writing a matching expression, and recording the partial products vertically. It's a whole mouthful, and a lot of this will be brand new to students who, like me, were educated in a different era of math, um, of math education. So we'll go through this together and we'll get through it, okay? And I think you'll see what the logic is to some of what we're doing here. Let's take a look at the expression. The expression is 4 times 34. So the first thing we want to do is we want to, we want to go ahead and model this on our place value chart. So 34, let's see, that's 3 tens, 1, 2, 3, and 4 ones, 1, 2, 3, 4. Excellent. And that I'm going to put over on the right in our vertical model, 34. Now, we're going to multiply 34 by 4. So, let's see. What do we need to do here? Well, in our place value, it's fairly simple. We're going to make four packages of everything we had here. So, we had three tens. Now we have four sets of three tens. We had four ones. Now we're going to make... four sets of three ones. And over here on the side we're going to multiply 34 times 4. So what do we get when we uh, multiply these four ones times 4? Well, we could say that it's 4 times 4 ones here, right? And actually, and we, if we just count them up here, we'll say it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Or we could count by 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16. So it looks like our answer is that we're going to get 16 ones, which is exactly what we'd expect. Now if we shift over to our, uh, to our partial products here, if we were to multiply 4 times these 4 ones, we would get 16. And we could describe that 16 as the same thing, right? 4 times 4 ones. Notice how that's exactly what we have down here. Let's move on to our tens. So over here in our tens, we used to have 3, now we have three. We have 4 sets of 3, so let's count those up. Well, first of all, we'll write it in unit form. So we have 4 times 3 tens here. And we can either do this math, just do this 4 times 3 tens, or we can count them up. Either way, we're going to end up with 12 tens here. Now let's take a look over on our vertical method here. Uh, we are multiplying, again, 4 times 3 tens. So actually, I'm going to write that here. We, the next step is going to be 4 times 3 tens. And if we multiplied... 4 times 3 tens, we would get 12 tens, which we would represent like this, 12 tens. Now, old school mathematicians will say that we've inserted the 0, right, and then we've, uh, and then we've multiplied 4 times 3 and gotten 12, but notice here that's not actually what we did. I mean, in a strict sense, we've taken 4 and multiplied it by 3 tens, and we got 12 tens. The zero is kind of a placeholder to make sure that we write our 12 tens properly in the tens and the hundreds place. So, we've got some values here. We've got some values down here. We might need to do some regrouping here. So let's take a look at our place value chart. We need to regroup. I'm going to switch to a different color. We might need to take 10 of these ones. I'm going to try to get exactly 10 of those and make them into a 10 here. Right? And we might need to take 10 of these. Let's see, that's 3, 6, 9, whoop, 10 of those to make 100. And if we did all of that, what would we end up with? We would end up with 100 right there. We would end up with 1, 2, 
three tens, and we would end up with one, two, three, four, five, six ones. 136. What do we end up with over here? I'm going to switch back to blue. If we just added our partial products, we would add our 16 to our 120, and we would get six ones, three tens, and 100. What do you know? 136. Same thing that we have over here. And now we've represented them both in our place value chart and in our partial products doing the vertical method. Okay? Now having done 1C, 1A and 1B should be somewhat easier for you. So good luck with those. Let's move on. Next problem is problem number two, and I've done that again, the more difficult of the two problems. Let's read that two together. Represent the following expressions with disks regrouping as necessary. To the right, record the partial products vertically. So, we have 5 times 42. Well, over here on the place value chart, we need to know how we're going to represent 42, and I think that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 tens, and 2 ones. And over here on the side, I'll say that's 42. And if we're going to multiply it by 5, we need to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that we have five sets of four tens. And we're going to need to do the same for the ones. And here on the vertical method, we're going to use 42 times 5. So what do we have after we've done this? Well, we have, really, we have five times two ones here, and here we have five, oops, sorry, we have five times four tens over here. Let's see, so how many tens do we actually have here, or how many ones do we actually have here? Let's say it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it looks like ten ones. And if we switch over here to the vertical method, if we were to multiply 5 times those two ones, we would end up with 10 ones. Right? That's 5 times 2 ones. Same thing that we did over on the place value chart. We focus our, ourselves back here on the left. Four time, I'm sorry, 5 times 4 tens is 20 tens. Right? And if we go over to the right hand side, 5 times 4 tens is 20, sorry, 20 tens. That's 5 times 4 tens is 20 tens. Now, I'm going to stay here on the right-hand side just to finish this off. If we were to add our partial products, 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, 2, two alone is 2, and we have our answer of 210. And I wonder if we're going to get the same thing over here on the uh, place value chart. Well, we're going to have to do some regrouping, that's for sure, right? I'm going to switch to a red marker. So we have 10 ones over here, and if we, group, if we bundle together 10 ones, we can make one 10. But we also need to bundle up some of our 10s here. So let's bundle together 10 of those into 100, and it looks like we still have 10 more here. We're going to do to make another 100. And then we still have that one left, the one that we created by bundling together all these tens. So if I look at these, I think we have two hundreds. We still have one ten left over, and we have no ones. Or two hundred and ten. Sorry. So again, we've come up with the same answer whether we use our place value chart or our vertical method. And in fact, not only is it two different ways of doing the problem, but what we're actually doing is the same. In the, vert pla in the place value chart, we're taking the unit form, two ones, and multiplying it by five. We're taking the unit form, four tens, and multiplying it by five. And that is exactly what we are doing in the to get partial products. We are taking five times two ones, five times two ones to get ten ones. And we're taking five times four tens, five times four tens, to get twenty tens. And if we add those together, we end up with 210 in both cases. 
Thanks so much for watching. I know this has been a somewhat longer uh, episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems, even though we only did two problems, but I hope it's helpful in getting you through the rest of your homework. We hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.